Greetings ladies and gentlefish, and today I'm bringing you something that I wasn't originally going to do, but I've been requested to do, so why the hell not? Basically a guide on how to play artillery, or self-propelled guns, SPGs, within the game. Um, now, I've not done uh, guides on particular tank classes before, because frankly, within a class, there's so much variation that it's very difficult and frankly misleading to give you a guide on how to play an entire particular class. However, in the case of artillery, I think it's more valid to do this um, than it is with many other classes, and there's certainly some hints and tips that I can try and give out. By the same token, if you have absolutely no interest in playing artillery, then hopefully, while it's not going to be the focus of this video, hopefully um, I should be able to give you an idea of how to kill them, how to deal with them, how to not get hit by them, and um, yeah, basically how to just mitigate their effects. So there should hopefully be something in this video for um, wannabe aspiring SPG players and people who uh, just want to kill SPGs. Um, that's going to be my aim. So I'll do it in a pretty standard format. I'm going to have a quick chat in the garage and just show you some characteristics. Um, I've got two, and then I've got two full games to show you and a couple of short snippets just to highlight particular points here and there. So, as it stands at the moment, um, within the game, I, for those that aren't aware, there are five different vehicle classes. You've got light tanks, medium tanks, heavy tanks, tank destroyers, and SPGs, or self-propelled guns. Um, there are seven nations currently within the game. The Chinese and Japanese don't yet have any self-propelled guns, any SPGs, so there are five different nations that have artillery. And here I have an example um, from each nation. And I'll just uh, start off by giving you some general trends. Um, but just before we do that, uh, a couple of warnings, I guess. Um, so, long, long time ago, artillery was, uh, generally speaking, overpowered. Way back when. I mean, artillery was basically put into the game originally to try and combat heavy tanks, to give a team a way of killing something with a ridiculous amount of armour. And generally the way artillery works is by lobbing very large calibre high explosive shells uh, toward the enemy, um, so that if you get a shot that lands nearby, the, exp the shell will explode and do some damage to its target. Um, if you get a shell uh, that lands directly on its target, again you'll get the explosion and you may or may not actually penetrate your target but the explosive force of the shell will do damage even if it doesn't penetrate and on those rare occasions when you do get a penetrating hit from an artillery shell it will completely wreck whatever it just hit. But back in the day artillery were frankly overpowered. Just to give you an example, I used to drive the Su-26 which was the Russian tier 3, remember tier 3 artillery piece. It had a fully rotatable turret. And the game in which I got my Ace Tanker award for that machine was a tier 5 game and I did 3000 damage in a tier 3 tank. Now it should we should point out that back in those days artillery only went up to tier 8 and they used to get something similar to scout matchmaking. So that if you were in a tier 3 artillery piece I think you could see tier six, possibly tier seven games, possibly just tier six, I can't quite remember. As of patch 8.6 they rebalanced this all um, and what they basically did was they stretched out the artillery line so that they go up to tier 10 like regular tanks, they removed their special matchmaking so they get match made like regular tanks, um, so if you're in a tier five for example you can get into games where you'll be shooting anything from tier three to tier seven, plus or minus two tiers, and they made them a lot less accurate but by restructuring it, basically what they did was mean that um, most of the time an artillery piece is not going to directly hit you, but if it does hit you, the gun is large enough calibre that it's really going to ruin your day. That's basically what they did. Now, it, the artillery became very dependent on luck, frankly. Um, and so if you decide that you want to play artillery, warning, it can be incredibly frustrating. As you take perfectly aimed shots and just doesn't matter, the shell goes nowhere near where you aim it and you miss by a country mile. Um, another thing to be wary of is if you are playing artillery, expect to get a lot of insults within the game. It is probably the least popular tank class or machine class and a lot of people have a real problem with people that play artillery. 
um, which I don't think is really right or fair, but that's the way it is. So if you're going to play it, have a thick skin and be able to uh, laugh at such things. Um, and you may find that playing it is really not for you. Um, it, it's quite a passive role. Um, and but even if you even if you don't want to play artillery itself, I would recommend having a go in it because it gives you an idea of what the what it can and can't do basically so when you're playing artillery you get an overhead strategic view of the battlefield uh, you can access that by pressing the shift key so usually that will take you into sniper mode in the case of an artillery it, it takes you into this overhead view um, this is potentially very powerful as it you know it enables you to see parts of the map that you would not usually be able to render um, and it allows you to take shots at very great distances um, to counterbalance, and so artillery, you know, are, are clearly uh, can do a lot of damage from range and over obstacles. The counterbalance to this is that your realistic DPM is very low. If someone gets up close and personal, you start having problems. So, hopefully, you'll see some of what I mean in the forthcoming gameplay and whatnot. But let's just give you a flavour for uh, each of the nations in terms of their artillery lines and counter uh, intuitively I'm gonna run from right to left on the tanks we've got down here so let's start off with the Americans generally speaking American artillery pieces tend to be fairly mobile and have quite a wide uh, gun traverse um, so I mean just to make this obvious clearly if you take this as your artillery piece the gun can't point backwards so the gun has a fixed frontal arc much like many tank destroyers in which it can fire if you want to shoot further around you have to turn the the tank so you tend to have quite a large gun traverse um, fairly mobile uh, guns that have quite a large splash radius so it's high explosive ammunition is the main ammunition type so you it will explode it has an explosion radius American shells tend to have quite a big explosion radius which is nice um, the offset the counterbalance American artillery guns not very accurate basically. So that's the Yanks. The Brits. Um, as with a lot of the British tech trees, really there's two different uh, different styles and it tends to change in the mid tiers. So lower tier British artillery tend to be rapid firing, relatively accurate, but with small calibre guns so they don't do much damage per shot as a general rule. Higher tier British artillery start getting access to some very large calibre weapons indeed. Um, and start getting less accurate and more like the American guns. So the Americans, when they get to tier 10, they get access to the T-92, which has the largest gun in the game, the most destructive gun in the game. The Brits, when they get to tier 10, they get access to the Conqueror gun carriage, which has the least accurate gun in the game. But, um, regardless, British artillery, generally speaking, tend to have a comparatively short range a wide gun traverse like the Americans and very high shell trajectory i.e. Um, they tend to shoot the shells very high before they land now this has a, uh, this a good side and a bad side so on the one hand it means that your shell travel time tends to be quite long um, that makes predictive shots very difficult and it means that if you're uh, that there's a much higher chance that your opponent's just gonna move and your shells not gonna hit them However, having that high trajectory allows you to go over a lot of obstacles that people would usually use to hide behind. And it's that feature that people complain a lot about when British artillery is shooting them. In particular, the FV-304, the Tier 6, known as the BERT sometimes, and the Conqueror gun carriage that I just mentioned. The gun may not be very accurate, but it has a large explosion radius and such a high shell trajectory that people get caught out thinking their artillery safe hiding behind an obstacle and then this you know massive shell lands on their head and they die the germans germans tend to get relatively powerful guns for their tier um but they tend to be limited to a very very narrow gun traverse so you move the gun a small amount and suddenly you have to move the entire tank and that resets your whole aiming cycle and that can be a very very frustrating process Russians, 
kind of like the Germans in a way. Again, they tend to get a very narrow gun traverse, and again, they tend to get access to some reasonably heavy hitting guns. Um, generally, the German guns tend to hit a little harder, but the Russians still get access to some pretty hard hitting guns, and they, they both tend to be quite immobile pieces. Um, so these two are fairly similar. French. The French tend to have, generally speaking, a lower caliber gun, or a le less destructive gun than their same tier counterparts. Uh, they also tend to have a very small explosion radius, meaning that in order to do any real damage, you basically have to get direct hits. However, to counterbalance that, firstly they tend to have a slightly higher rate of fire and aim slightly faster and be slightly more accurate than a lot of their counterparts from other nations, but also they move like a bat out of hell. For example, if you look at this one, the tier 8, speed limit, 60 kilometers an hour, and with an 850 horsepower engine, it will reach that. So, yeah, the French tend to be very good at running away. <laughs> I'm British, insert joke here, but it is actually a very useful trait to have. And so that's sort of a little bit of flavour for a lot of the artillery pieces. And um, before I move on, one thing I will mention about these is that um, artillery, and this is kind of mainly true, uh, mainly applicable to the Brits, but it, it does apply to all of them to a certain extent. Um, even the most heavily armoured tank tends to have very weak armour on its roof because your enemy aren't going to be directly above you, right? Well, this means that if you get a shell with a very high trajectory, say, from an artillery piece, it can come straight down through the roof of your tank and completely wreck you coming straight through that thin armour. And with their high shell trajectory, that's something the British tend to specialise in, which can be a very nasty surprise for people. So, um, that's some general characteristics for each of the nations. What I will quickly say is that, generally speaking, with artillery, your hit point pool is pathetic. Don't expect to survive more than one or two hits um, from anyone that decides to hunt you. Point the first. Point the second, your gun tends to have very bad handling characteristics, i.e. relatively inaccurate with a very long aiming time and a very slow rate of fire. This makes it really difficult to defend yourself up close and personal if someone comes to try and kill you. That's just a fact of life, I'm afraid. And if you're playing artillery, you're going to have to get used to that. Um, is there anything else that I wanted to say in general? Let's move on to some equipment and skills very quickly. So, if you want to keep an artillery piece, what sort of equipment do I recommend? Well, I think there's two pieces of equipment that are essential, and the third is kind of up to you. So, one, you want a, uh, a shell rammer. That makes your gun fire faster, and you want... You want a better reload. You just do. You also want an enhanced gun laying drive. Your aim time is horrible, so if you can make that better, fantastic. Now, if you have access to it, and this will apply to very few artillery pieces because they tend to be open-topped, if you have access to it, improved vents is not a terrible idea. Failing that, the third equipment slot's kind of up to you. You could make a case for a camo net to try and stay hidden and stealthy, um, but it's kind of up to you. Crew skills, sixth sense on your commander is not a bad idea. It's always nice to know if you've been caught out and spotted. Camo on the rest is also not a bad idea. Brothers in arms is not a bad idea either. Um, now, just before... Uh, no, no, I'll talk about that later. That's fine. Um, so let me show you a little bit of game footage, I think. Um, and I'm going to start off with... Uh, I guess some do's and don'ts um, and little pieces of advice before we get on to the full length games. So, firstly, a little bit of advice if you are facing off against artillery. Generally speaking, uh, and this is especially true if you're in a heavy tank or a large slow tank destroyer or something like that, if you don't want to get hit by artillery, go somewhere with a lot of cover. A town maybe. You know, somewhere that's built up and that you're unlikely to get hit by artillery from. Now, it's generally not too difficult to work out what such places could be. Usually, they're either built up areas, urban areas. So, for example, this is Fisherman's Bay. And you can see over on the right hand side of Fisherman's Bay, down the eight and nine lines and zero lines, there is a town. So, if you want, go to the town. There is also some housing across the middle of the map. 
Now I know this is a relatively open map, but try and make it difficult for artillery to hit you. It's usually fairly straightforward to work out which direction artillery is going to be shooting from, because as a general rule they don't stray very far from their spawn point. Do not do what this gentleman does. So, there's a conqueror here, tier 9 British heavy tank. He is currently out in the middle of a field, nowhere near any cover, and he's sitting in the open. He's not even moving, he's just sitting there and shooting someone. He disappears for a moment, reappears, and I put a shot into his side armour for almost 1200 damage. The side armour of the Conqueror is garbage, so I shoot it and do an awful lot of damage. Now, you could debate endlessly about the various merits and otherwise of artillery. Some people like it, some people don't, and you may have noticed in chat just there, the Conqueror in question swore at me. Um, now, where, while we can argue the various merits of artillery, the do's and don'ts, if you are going to sit out in the middle of an open field, not even moving, just sitting stationary, and you get hit by artillery, you have absolutely no one to blame but yourself. It is not the artilleryman's fault, it is no one's fault except you. You should not be sitting in the middle of an open field for an extended period of time. When he first was sitting there, I hadn't even loaded the gun yet. I had time to bring my targeting reticule onto him, finish loading the gun, fully aim at him, have him disappear off the map, get respotted. Then I took my shot. And then he whinges and complains and moans. Don't do that. If you don't want to get hit by artillery, don't sit in the middle of an open map. Now, I'm not saying that if you are in cover you are guaranteed to be safe from artillery. What I'm saying is that where he was sitting, he was guaranteed to not be safe from artillery. Don't make it easy for them. Make it hard for them. So there we go. That, that, that's just a little bit of advice for those people who are not driving artillery pieces. Ah, oh, some people, honestly. Now, next clip is to give a little bit of advice to artillery drivers. Bear in mind, when somebody fires a high explosive shell, not a um, not a, an armor piercing shell, but a high explosive shell, it leaves a tracer. And that tracer is very clearly visible from the overhead view that you get in artillery mode. The strategic, whatever you want to call it, this view from the top. Um, now you can also see it in other tanks, but it's most easily seen in this mode by artillery. Artillery tends to primarily fire high explosive and so you can use these tracers to find and track down enemy artillery even if they haven't already been spotted and this is what I'm going to show you in this little clip bit. So initially I'm just going to target this Sherman. There we go, guns loaded. Someone kills him. Boo. That's annoying. So, I switch focus to, I've just paused it at the right moment, I switch focus to an area that I know tends to be inhabited by artillery players on this map. And right there as I've paused it, you can see the tracer that I'm talking about going across the middle of the um, display. So, there's one tracer. So it looks like there's an artillery piece somewhere around there. There's a second tracer. Now, there's two artillery pieces here. I'm not going to faff around with that too much, but I just saw an artillery tracer, or a high explosive shell tracer, probably from artillery, coming from about this location. So I'm aiming on this location. Aim and aim. Fired again. That tells me a couple of things. One, it tells me that that guy is probably the M37 because he has a relatively fast reload. He was able to fire twice in the time it took me to, to aim, basically. But, just saw his tracer again, so I slightly shift the targeting reticule and fire. And there we go. I'm rewarded 
with a kill on their M37 artillery piece. That's what's known as counter battery fire. I.e. you are specifically uh, as an artillery player looking out for where the enemy artillery is by looking at likely locations for the enemy artillery to be sitting and bearing in mind generally speaking they won't stray too far from their spawn point. So looking out for those areas going in on where you see tracers and blind firing those locations as there is probably someone there to blind fire at. It's a very useful thing to be able to do as an artillery player and can help your team a lot. However, don't spend too much of your time doing it because if you so if you don't see an artillery tracer for a while, do something else. Find another target. Find a target that has been lit up because otherwise you're not firing and you're not helping your team. But if you've just got a spare moment like I had here, look for the artillery. There he was. Killed him. Excellent. Move on. Cool. So now let's just show you a couple of uh, full games, um, full artillery games, to give you an idea of what you can expect from respectable um, artillery gameplay. You know, nothing, nothing spectacular, but fairly solid artillery games. Alright, I'm in the SU-122A Tier 5 Russian SPG, and we're here on Cliff. Um, and we shall see what we can do. Now one thing um, I haven't mentioned yet is that as an artillery player generally speaking you want to be moving after every shot uh, and that's because you have a long enough reload that well you should probably be doing something in that time so relocate because a if you've got someone watching out for counter battery fire like I just uh, and I just demonstrated some counter battery fire in the previous clip if you've got someone watching out for that by constantly moving you make it far harder for them to actually hit you but also, by moving to different locations, it means you can get different angles on your targets. Angles that perhaps the enemy are not expecting, and so they haven't taken cover from. Now, one thing you'll notice with this SPG... Um, sorry, before I get onto that. For lower tier artillery, this is less of an issue, because generally speaking, people aren't watching out for counter-battery fire. The artillery in question don't tend to have a long enough range to be effective at counter-battery fire, even if someone were watching out for them. And they tend to have a fast enough reload that uh, moving between shots is counterproductive. Um, and also, don't necessarily move between every shot. Most of the time you should, but just use a bit of common sense. If there's a light tank in your vicinity and you think by moving you're going to get spotted, don't move. You know, just, just don't treat any of these rules as things you must follow. Use a bit of common sense. You know, use your own noggin. So there's a guy. I have a blind shot. I probably won't hit him. Maybe I'll... No. Let me, and you can see there, that shot went absolutely nowhere near where I was aiming it. Um, but there we go. So I'm moving between shots. Just relocating slightly. Now you can see, I am very close to where I spawned. This is not a very fast artillery piece, so it would take a long time to go anywhere else. Um, and so for now at least, and I think for most of this game, I'm going to stay in the vicinity of my spawn. One thing I would advise uh, when using artillery is you tend to want to aim slightly behind your enemy. Ooh, that one hurt. You want to aim slightly behind your enemy because then you sort of guide the shot through them. If you aim in front of them, the shell can just, well, land in front of them. But if you aim behind them, um, you increase the chances that they are an obstacle in the way of your shell and that they're going to get hit, basically. It, it can be difficult to explain. Um, AMX M4, quite lightly armoured. Um, and one thing you should bear in mind is that, generally speaking, as an artillery player, you have a slow rate of fire. So you are not going to be able to... Bye-bye! You're not going to be able to fire that many shots in a game. And thus, you must prioritise your targets. What targets should you be going for? Well, there's no right and wrong answer to that. Um, you have to play it by the situation. But, as a general rule, I would say, don't go for easy kills, um, unless they're in a really difficult to dig out position. But, you know, or you've already pre-aimed there anyway, and it will take you so long to re-aim somewhere else, you might as well go for it. But, generally speaking, you don't want to go for easy kills, because then you're using your 30 second reload shot, you know, one of your pressure shots, against a relatively... 
um, easy to kill target and it's a waste. So I'm taking the shot against the panther for example because I was already aimed there in the vicinity. I didn't have a shot on the Churchill and the E25 would be very difficult for me to hit as he moves around a lot. As it is, the shell missed anyway. Um, so what should you be going for? Well, some priority targets. Anything that's really poorly armoured because you've got a high explosive shell. If it's really poorly armoured you will do more damage to the target. The way high explosive shells work is that if they don't penetrate, and they tend to have quite low penetration, but if they do not penetrate the shell explodes and the amount of damage you do to your target is dependent on the thickness of the armour at the point that your shell hits them. Um, now here's a good example of something not to do. I could take the shot on the E25, but my targeting reticule is huge, I'm not very accurate, and there's the very real risk that if I were to take the shot on the E25, I would kill my panther ally. And I don't want to do that, not least because it would be friendly fire, and if you do too much of that you get banned. But, I mean, that's counterproductive, I don't want to kill my friend. Now occasionally, you might decide, you know what, he's probably going to die anyway, I'm going to take the chance that I can kill the guy assailing him and save my ally. I understand that, but you need to be very, very careful when you're taking these shots. And for that reason, I don't take this shot. Bad artillery players will take these shots regardless. Good artillery players will think about it. And I'm, I'm not saying I'm the best artillery player, and especially not now. The E25 is on such low health, it'd be a waste. And as it turns out, our Panther didn't need the help. He had the situation under control. So I'm glad I didn't take the shot. Um, what was I saying? Oh, yeah. That's how high explosive shells work, and so if you target an enemy with very poor armour, you increase the chances that you're going to get a penetrating hit, which will do a buttload of damage. I've no idea why our Crusader SP was so far forward. And even if you don't penetrate, you will do more damage because it's a weakly armoured target. Other targets of priority are at the other end of the scale. You know, targets that are very, very heavily armoured indeed. Um, and most of your team will struggle to penetrate, but with your large caliber high explosive shells, you can at least do some damage to them. Um, now, that guy's disappeared, but I'm assuming he's still there. There we go. Killed him with the splash damage. Um, that was a bit lucky, because it wasn't a fully aimed shot. So, you can use this to dig opponents out of their strong location. So, a good example is an American heavy tank. If American heavy tanks can get into a position where they're hull down, i.e. hiding their hull and only showing the front of their turret, they can be incredibly difficult to move from that position, and they can wreck your team. They really can, especially if they're top tier. But nothing makes... No, now I was actually going to target that guy, quick pause, I was actually going to target that guy, which would not have been a particularly sensible idea, because he's a low tier tank. But he was sitting still, go figure. Um, Yes, but a, and again, I'm about to target this guy, and I would not recommend this shot. I would, with hindsight, probably be tempted to look out for better shots, but I was already aimed and I wanted to try and do something. Anyway, yes, nothing makes someone move from their position like a large calibre high explosive shell hitting them in the face. So that way, doing that, you don't do necessarily a massive amount of damage, but you, it is a very, very useful thing to do for your team. Um, now, as a result of this, uh, and, and also, where possible, you want to concentrate on stationary targets because they're easier for you to hit, and slower targets because they're easier for you to hit. And so, as a result, pro um, primary artillery targets tend to be tank destroyers because they tend to either fall into the slow, lumbering, but heavily armoured and possibly difficult for some of your team to deal with category, or the um, thinly armoured sitting still for a long time category. And so tank destroyers tend to be right up there on the list of things to kill if you're an artillery player. Just seeing if I can try and get a shot on this M44. He disappears. I think he's stopped there, but he keeps going, or he starts again. My shell misses, unfortunately, and he gets taken out. So that wasn't, you know, the best game in the world, but that was, you know, an alright game in an artillery piece. I think we got something like second class mastery out of it. You know, it was okay. It was nothing special. Um, the second replay I'm going to show you is focusing much more on mobility 
and relocating and how useful that can be for you. So I'll just quickly show you some post-game stats from this game and then we shall move on. So here's the last bit of footage that I wanted to show you. Um, we are in the Lorraine 15551. This is the French Tier 8 artillery piece. And this is French. It is um, This machine is based on the chassis of the Lorraine 40 ton medium tank, which is a very, very fast Tier 9 medium tank. And so as a result, this artillery piece goes like a bat out of hell. So we're going to use that mobility. If you're not using the mobility of the Lorraine, it's a waste of time playing it. So we're not going to stay anywhere near the spawn point. We are going to bomb it over to A1, A2. Why are we doing that? Well, there's a very good chance the enemy aren't expecting us to do that. Point the first. Point the second, that gives us clean shots straight down the one and two lines. Point the third, um, the engagement will be at closer range, which means that um, our shells have a shorter travel time, and that uh, as they're closer, we'll be more likely to get direct hits, which is good. And there is a spot up here you can use to make yourself not in direct line of sight of your enemy. So you can see there's just this hillock. And I'm going to sit myself eventually. There we go. Make sure that bush is in front of me. And then right back here, there is no direct line of sight between me and the enemy. So when I fire, you know, they'll know there's someone roughly up here, but they won't have... A, an exact idea of where I am and I end up actually moving to have a bigger hillock in the way and here we go so hopefully that Indian Panzer won't be in my way and there's a Carnarvon tier 8 British heavy tank without particularly good armour so we're just aiming in on him now you can see that the line is red when I don't have a shot or when the shot is blocked by some sort of obstacle so I just switch targets have a look at someone else because I didn't have a shot, an effective shot on that Carnarvon. I aim in. Nope. We switch back. Ooh, 110. Ooh, Tiger 2. Okay. So, let's choose my shots carefully. Tiger 2. Seems to be a relatively easy shot. Ouch. That's going to leave a mark. And we just move around a little bit, so that if the enemy artillery is looking over here, and it's not that likely that they would be, but if they are... Hopefully they don't just land a direct hit on my head and kill me. And we're aiming in our next shot. But, you know, our gun is still reloading. There's a wealth of targets over here. Unfortunately, so far, we've lost two tanks and the enemy has lost none. So this Tiger's getting a little bit close for comfort. There we go, 484 into him. That was not a penetrating hit, that was just explosive splash damage. These guys are getting a little close for comfort. And it's making me nervous. Okay. Oh. I think their artillery spotted the Indian Panzer, so I am just going to get out of dodge. Again, using that mobility. I'm fast. I can relocate, so I'm going to do so. Now, I might take a hit in the process coming over here, and indeed I do, but hopefully I won't take more than one. And there we go. I could have stood my ground, but I think, in my opinion, if I had stood my ground, I'd have risked... Um, being shot at and killed, so I relocate and go somewhere else. Um, now, while we're talking about this, one thing I would say on the note of standing your ground: sometimes it appears that an enemy, the enemy, are winning. Don't do what many people do, um, especially in artillery: drive into the nearest body of water, or just leave the game, or find the nearest wall and unload a high explosive shell into it so it kills you. All you're doing is making it more likely that your team is going to lose. You're turning it into a self-fulfilling prophecy. There we go, we get a hit on that AT-15. Um, stay around, do more damage. Even if it's only you get one more hit in against an enemy target, that's more damage. Relocate if you can, go somewhere else, make it less likely that you're going to die. You know, keep fighting, get yourself more XP. And if you die, if the enemy kills you rather than you committing suicide like a coward, if you do die, Fine, the enemy gets some XP out of you. They deserved it. Why not? Anyway, mini ran over. Um, 
or bit of advice, whatever you want to call it. So, T29, oh, balls, <laughs> he just got obliterated. Okay, so I'm going to relocate again. Uh, we appear to be pushing through the forest fairly um, successfully, so I'm going to move into the forest so that I have a meat shield between me and the enemy. And again, you can see we're bombing it along at 55, 56 kilometers an hour at the moment. Quite happily. Oh, we just lost a bunch of tanks. That position where I was originally in, the Indian pans are still alive, but everyone else around there has died. So relocating was the best thing to do. So we are now up here in the top of the forest, at the top of the forest, and there's that Carnarvon. Now I reckon he is, or someone at least, is going to go and try and dislodge our Indian Panzer. So I'm going to attempt to put a shot into whoever that happens to be. So there's the Carnarvon over there, there's a 110, but I don't have a shot on the 110. He's behind, uh, there's, there's a the hill and a wreck in the way. He's moved back so the wreck is no longer in the way, but the, the way the hill slopes down is kind of frustrating. And French artillery tends to have a very shallow shell trajectory, so that means your shell travel time is fairly good but it's very difficult for you to shoot over obstacles and so sod it. Carnarvon. Oh, it's going to be a close range fight. This is awkward. Okay. He kills uh, the Indian Panzer and so I have a predictive shot there. And 463. There we go. Nice little leading shot which you can do in artillery perfectly happily. And another thing to do with artillery that I don't think I'm actually going to really show you any footage of if you see a tree fall down when you're in overhead uh, artillery view, if you will, well, someone must have been there to knock it down. So, have a guess. Are they stationary? Are they moving? If they're stationary, have a shot at that location. If you think they moved, have a shot to where you think they are. Things like that really irritate people, though. Other people. Um, because, you know, they go, oh, I haven't been spotted. Well, you shouldn't have knocked down the tree. Here's a Centurion 7-1. British medium tank. The armour isn't amazing and there's 605 into his face. That was not a penetrating hit, that was just the explosive damage on him. Now I think you can see the way this game is going. It's 611, 612. Um, you know, we're losing and we are probably going to lose, but I like experience and credits, so I'm going to try and do some more damage. Um, as much damage as I can. There's a tortoise in front of me and we've got a conqueror off to my left. So they should hopefully spot enemies approaching, and I should hopefully be able to get shots on them. Just waiting, and a lot of artillery is patience, playing the waiting game, knowing the map, pre-aiming at likely spots where players you think are going to turn up. So if that Centurion pops back up uh, in that same location, I was pre-aiming for that. And, oh, there we go, right down by our Conqueror. I'm reluctant to completely switch <laughs> GW uh, Tiger P on the enemy team saying he loves British heavies. That's because British heavies have kind of dodgy armour and hate artillery. So, IS-8. We're aiming at the rear of that IS-8 and I'm hoping that the Conqueror can stay alive long enough to allow me to help him, but the is eight's coming in for a bit of close range fight. Ah, oh, damn it. I don't think I'm going to be able to keep this guy alive. This is a very risky shot. Oh, our Conqueror dies, so I put a shot in and it goes straight into the rear of the IS-8 for over 500. Tortoise is down, I'm now on my own. Oh, and there's a leopard coming up behind me and I'm reloading. Oh dear. So I try and... no. Ugh. And I die. You know, I didn't actually get any kills that game and we lost quite convincingly, but I did a respectable amount of damage um, and did more damage because I A, used my mobility to get into um, an advantageous position. A little bit cheeky, that uh, position early in the game, but it was advantageous and it worked out. And B, um, again, used my mobility to go somewhere else, uh, away from uh, uh, an engagement that I thought would just be a loss and I would die, to somewhere where I thought I could do some more damage, keep doing damage, and just keep the game going. Um, so that's an example of how, although the gun on that tank, that, that SPG doesn't hit that hard, the mobility keeps you going, and it, it, it's, I can't emphasize that enough. Don't just sit still in one spot as an artillery player, that's, that's just, you're not playing the tank to its strengths, especially if you're in one of the French ones or in a mobile 
any sort of mobile artillery piece. You know, keep moving, go somewhere else, get shots from unexpected angles. Anyway, that was the last game that I wanted to show you. Now, it's entirely possible that I've missed a whole bunch of different bits of advice I could give you when it comes to um, to playing SPGs or artillery, or indeed when it comes to killing them. Um, but I hope that that at least gives you a flavour for what it's like, um, and that uh, if you do decide to play SPGs, um, then you'll at least have some success. Hopefully I've prepared you for some of the things you can expect, the frustrations, you, you'll get a lot of games where you just miss regardless of what you do, um, the insults people will throw at you, um, um, but an idea of what you need to know as an artillery player, knowing the map is important and very helpful, where people are likely to turn up and pre-aiming at such locations, uh, and things like that. So anyway, I hope you found that useful, um, possibly even vaguely entertaining. Entertaining? Entertaining. If you did, then please feel free to catch some of my other videos and or subscribe to my channel, and I wish you very happy hunting on that battlefield. Ciao, ciao.